Hi, the Dr. C and I'm Dr. LB and I'm here to help you through your math difficulties. Today, we look at applications of systems of linear equations and two variables. In other words, let's look at some word problems. So, how do we problem solve for systems of equation? First, you want to read the problem multiple times if necessary and assign variables to unknown values. Number two, you want to write a system of equations that model the situation. Number three, we want to solve using either substitution or addition. Then we want to check our solution. So let's look at some problems. The sum of two numbers is four. If one number is subtracted from the other number, their difference is six. So let x equal a number and let y be the other number. So their sum is 4, their difference is 6. So this is already set up to where we can use addition. 2x, the y's go away, equals 10. So x is 5. And here we have 5 plus y equals 4. So y is negative 1. So we say the two numbers are 5 and negative 1. So we got another one. A chemist needs to mix a solution with 16% alcohol and a solution with 28% alcohol to obtain 32 ounces of a solution with 25% alcohol. How many ounces of each of the original alcohol must be used? So if we let X represent the amount of the 16% and Y be the amount of the 28 percent then we know that we need 32 ounces total so what that means for us is that x plus y will equal 32 and then it says that what a chemist needs to mix a solution with 16 percent alcohol and 28 percent alcohol so 16% is the same as 0.16. If I multiply that by the amount of the 16%, and if I multiply 0.28 by y, which is the amount of the 28%, I should get what? A 25% solution, which is 0.25, times a total of 32 ounces. And we need to solve this system. Well, let's see what happens here. Let me rewrite my system as x plus y equals 32. And I can get rid of decimals by moving each decimal two places to the right to get 16x plus 28y. So if I multiply 25 times 32, I'll get 800. Now, we need to solve this system. Let's choose to get rid of the x. So I'm going to multiply by negative 16, I'm going to have negative 16x minus 16y equals negative 512. 16x plus 28y equals 800. Then when I add these together, I get 12y equals 288. Or I get y equals 24. So y equals 24. So now I need to find x. And I need to go back to one of my original equations to find x. So I'm going to go back here. So I'm going to have x plus y, which is 24, equals 32. So if I subtract 24 from both sides, x equals 8. 
So what this means is that the chemist needs eight ounces of the 16 solution and 24 ounces of the 28% solution. All right, let's read. When a plane travels with the wind, it can go 4,200 miles in six hours. When a plane goes against the wind, it can take seven hours to fly the same distance. What is the average velocity of the plane and the wind? One thing we need to remember here is distance equals rate times time. And whether we go with the wind or against the wind, it's going to take the same 4,200 miles to do that in varying amounts of time. So let X be the velocity of the plane. And let Y be the velocity of the wind. Now when a plane travels with the wind, it goes 4,200 miles, it's our distance, in six hours. So, going with the wind, our time is six hours, and our rate is going to be the velocity of the plane plus the velocity of the wind. So, that makes sense because when you're going with the wind, then you have to add the velocity of the plane, the velocity of the wind. If you're ever on an airplane and, they, and you make it to your destination a little bit sooner, more than likely, if you left at the time you were supposed to leave it's because your plane was traveling with the wind and it adds velocity to your plane now on the other hand if you're going against the wind in the situation the number of miles is the same when we go against the wind now it's going to take you a little bit longer to get there and it's going to take you a little bit longer because you have to do the velocity of the plane minus the velocity of the wind if you think about that going against each other, it's going to slow that plane down. So we have um, a system of equations here using distance equals rate times time. Um, we can rewrite this system as x plus y equals, if I divide both sides by 6, I have 700. And I have x minus y equals, if I divide both sides by 7 here, I'm going to have 600. So this is set up for addition, 2x equals 1,300, so x is going to be 650. And if x is going to be 650, then y is going to be 700 minus 650, so y is 50. So the velocity of the plane is 650 miles per hour and the velocity of the wind is 50 miles per hour. All right, the revenue function R of X is going to be the price per unit sold times X, the amount sold. The cost function for a particular item will be the fixed cost plus the cost per unit produced times X, which represents um, the amount sold. So a company makes scooters, has a fixed cost of $100,000. It costs $100 to produce each scooter. They sell the scooters at $300 each. What is the cost function? the revenue function, and the break-even point. Well, the cost is the fixed cost. In here it says we have a fixed cost of $100,000 plus the cost it takes to produce. 
It costs a hundred dollars to produce the scooter and it costs three hundred dollars that that's how much they sell it for. So the cost produced will be one hundred and then X is gonna be the amount. The revenue function is going to be the price per unit sold, which is $300 times X, the amount produced. Now it says to find the break even point. The break even point occurs when the cost equals the revenue. So we have 100,000 plus 100x equals 300x. So I have 100,000 equals 200x. So x is going to be 500. And this is our break even point. Revenue function and cost function. So remember that Dr. LV is always in. Please come back for more math help.